presence of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. What an awesome presence of the Lord here this morning on this Good Friday. Lest we forget Gethsemane. Lest we forget God's great love for us. The Bible says in, uh, in Isaiah 53 from verse 4 and 3 from verse 3. It says he was despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid and he hid his face from him. And he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and our sorrows. Yet he did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. He, our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Let us always remember why he did it. Lest we forget what God has done for us. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. As a sheep before his shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. Lest we forget what God has done for us. Verse 10 says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for our sin. For I have received from the Lord that which I also pass unto you. That the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body which is broken for you. Why in remembrance? Let us always be reminded of what God has done for us. His awesome love, his love that is so wide that you can't get around it. His love that is so high that it's impossible to climb. A love that is so deep that it reaches into the pit of hell and saved us. Is there somebody that can say amen? amen? And today we think about what Christ has done on the cross of Calvary. And our hearts is filled with gladness and with great joy. Because if it wasn't for Christ, if it wasn't for the cross, where would you and I have been this morning? And so we thank you. We will never forget what God has done for us. We'll never forget, for the, forget about the sacrifice that was made. They hung him wide. They stretched him. And yet he did not open his mouth. Because he found you and I worthy. He found you and I worthwhile going to the cross. No man has greater love than to lay down his life for you and I. And so a love that is so awesome. A love that is so deep. A love that is so unconditional. That he would give his very own life for us. This morning, his body, his broken body came so that we could be made whole. He came from heaven to earth to break his body and to be brought to nothing. So that you and I, so that you and I, so that you and I, so that you and I may be whole. In sickness you are healed. In brokenness you are restored. He took the bread, broke it, and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. For as often as you eat this bread, you remember the Lord's death until he comes. We may have the bread. same manner he took the cup and said this is the new covenant in my blood for as often as you drink it you remember the Lord's death I often say and I always say that his blood flows through our veins it's a love that is so awesome a love that is so unconditional that nothing can spoil it that no spot no wrinkle and no blemish can stain that love a love that captures us and holds us dear when we feel that we can't make it. A love that is so awesome. A love that is so awesome and, and blessed beyond measure. That he found you and I worthy and fit to die. 
This new covenant, all old things have been deleted, all old things have been washed away, we start on a clean slate. More than 2,000 years ago, no animal had to go to the slaughter. That would be a temporary measure. But guess what? Our great and awesome God, Jesus Christ himself, laid down his life so that there no animal slaughter had to take place as a temporary measure. His sacrifice is eternal. The Bible says that he will have communion with us one day when we get there. Not only do we celebrate or remember his death, but we are privy to some information that Sunday is on its way. Sunday is coming. Sunday is coming. We are privy and we are, we are allowed to see that because greater is he that is in us than him that is in the world. We declare this morning, Satan, that we are under the blood. We declare this morning that the blood washes whiter than snow. We declare this morning that the power in the blood has never ever lost its power. It will never ever lose its power. He took the cup. The new covenant in my blood. For as often as you drink it, you remember the Lord's death until he comes. He never comes. And ask Pastor Regan just to thank God for the table. We bow our heads in prayer. Father, we are so, so thankful for this beautiful service and this day that you have made. But we are here today as a congregation, oh God, purely because Jesus did the will of the Father. The will of the Father was for Jesus to come to this earth and die for all of us. My God. We are so thankful, Jesus. Your grace and your mercy. You came and you died on the cross. You looked at every single one of us that is here today. You saw us. You saw us in our pain. You saw us in our hurt. You saw us going through so many difficulties. You saw us in marriage. You saw all those things beforehand. And you knew that on the cross of Calvary, you came and you paid a price. We are thankful. Help us here today, oh God. Let us understand the depth of your sacrifice. The depth of the sacrifice you made on the cross so that we don't have to go through that. The scriptures are there. Your word is there. The Holy Spirit is there. Help us to understand the importance of commemorating this day. It was the change it changed this world. It's the change that we as Christians need to bring to our society. Help us to serve like Jesus served. We are not bigger than anyone. Help us to serve, oh God, the way Jesus served. Because serving is not above anybody else. But it is serving and giving as God has, has, has blessed us with. Come and bless this communion as we are looking forward to commemorating the day that you rose from the dead. What a glorious day! We are waiting in anticipation, oh God, to celebrate this day because we know. That you had us in mind. I thank you today, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can you put your hands together and thank God for the awesome privilege we have as this congregation? Yeah. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Thank you. Join me as we welcome Pastor Anka as she'll come and do the welcoming. Thank you so much. Please put your hands together.
as we welcome Pastor Anka. Good morning, Crystal Church. On behalf of Pastor Joan and Dr. Carl, I would just like to welcome you all to this morning service. And if you are watching on live stream, a warm welcome to you and thank you for tuning in. Today we have special visitors here today. We have special guests, our first time visitors. And we're so grateful that you are here today. Um, we've prepared a special gift for you. In order for you to receive this gift, please just raise your hands. And uh, our host and hostesses will hand you a brochure where we tell you what we do, why we do what we do here at Crystal Church. And there will be a slip in this brochure. Please fill it out immediately. Or fill, fill it in rather immediately. And hand it back to the host and hostess and they will hand you a gift. If this is you, please raise your hand. A warm, warm welcome to you and enjoy the rest of the service with us. Remember the halls of the crowd that day as the tears began to fall. Remember the cross as it rose on high as he hung for all to see. Remember the whip and the horrific way they flayed him to the bone. Remember the crown pressed upon his head, the blood dripping from his face. Remember his love, his grace, his grief and his pain. The sacrifice he freely gave. Remember it now. Remember it again. Good morning, everyone, and to those watching via live stream. Thank you to our senior pastors, Dr. Carl and Pastor Joan, and our very own Pastor Xavier and Pastor Anka, and the broader leadership for entrusting me to remind us why we give or why we should give to Jesus. The title of the tithe talk this morning is Remember. Deuteronomy 8 verse 18 says, Remember the Lord your God. He is the one that gives you power to be successful, to fulfill the covenant he confirmed to your ancestors with an oath. The book of Deuteronomy from verse 17 reminds us that God, it is God who gives us everything we have. And God simply asks us to manage it for him. The word remember means to become aware of something that you may have forgotten. To bring back to one's consciousness, to recall, to retain in one's conscious mind. I'm always fascinated how people remember the things that are simply irrelevant, things that are insignificant, things that simply don't add value, things that break relationships down instead of breaking them or building them up. People are very selective in what they remember. Sometimes we'll say they want to remember what they can or what they want. We choose what to remember in our life. When it comes to our giving to God, do we remember what God sacrificed on this wonderful day? Do we remember that He gave His only Son so that we may have life? Do we remember that we were, when we were in trouble that He came through for us? Do we remember that every time when there's no food, He seems to come through for us? I remember how the Lord, a few months ago, did something that I thought, wow, I didn't expect that. He created an opportunity for me to do something. So I've been at the firm for 15 years, but I've only been a director for seven years of that 15 years. I work in the corporate, commercial, and litigation department, so I fight all my life. Disputes and disputes and disputes. That's my life. And so seven years seems long. But most of the team members or directors in my team have been partners or directors for 25 years plus. And so the team that I work in is a team that is a formidable team, a team that performs regularly and does what they need to do and works on very high profile matters. This corporate and litigation team is different to an insurance team that we have and we have various other teams within the firm. But this team that I work within comprises of 30 people. 
ranging from directors, associates, trainees, filing clerks, secretaries, and the like. The Lord then decides at some point in time earlier this year that He wants to do something new and He wants to create an opportunity. So every team in our firm, when you have a big team like this, has a team leader. Now the team leader we've been having has been a team leader for a, a long time. And he's a senior practitioner. But the Lord decides, I'm going to change that. And the Lord then decides this year from January 2024 to make me the team leader of this new team. You see, never in my mind or in my wildest dreams that I ever thought that the Lord would make this move so early in my career. But the Lord knew that this was the season and the time for me to go into this position and do what I need to do to proclaim the word of God. You see, for me, it's very simple. It's an opportunity that God has given to me because of my obedience to giving to Him all the time. I do not waver. I do not hesitate. I do not doubt in this word of God. I do not doubt in this God that we serve. I remember what He's done for me and my family. And I give honor to Him through my tithe and my offering. We must always remember, everyone, that God will examine our actions at the end of our life. But until then, the quality of our stewardship, the quality of our giving to God is being consistently monitored by our Father. Robert Morris puts it so aptly in his book when he says, Knowing that my stewardship is being examined from heaven makes me want to examine it myself. Pastor Torrey Roberts, in one of his sermons two weeks ago, said something profound. And I thought I'd bring it back to tithing. He said, Distractions are the worst, your worst enemy. Sometimes the victim mentality is also your worst enemy. Sometimes comparing yourself is also your worst enemy. Because all of those things keep you away from the most important thing that you can do, and that's to honor God and serve Him. He says that the enemy knows, the enemy knows that distractions draw you away from doing what you need to do. So he says, if you become aware and you know and you remember who has been good to you, if you remember that giving to God has blessings, if you remember all of those things and do it, you will be dangerous in the kingdom of God. This morning, I want you to take you back. The title of the tithe talk says, Remember. I want you to remember what this day means to us as Christians, as believers in the body of Christ. I want you to remember when you were down and out, who came through for you. I want you to remember that day when you had nothing, the Lord sent a vessel to come and help you out. I want you to remember how good this God that you say you serve is to you. And when you remember, think about what you're going to give to God this morning to honor Him. Sometimes the smallest step in the right direction ends up being the biggest step in your life. If you're going to take that small step this morning, and I encourage you to take that small step this morning. You will experience the manifold blessings that God has in store for you. For those watching via live stream, the banking details appear on the screen below. For those in church, we'll have baskets coming across. And for those who want to swipe, the swiping facilities at the back. Can we all please stand and pray for the tithe and offering this morning? Father, we come to you, Father, as your servants. We come to adore and honor you on the special day that you gave up your son as a sacrifice, Father. You gave it up for us, Lord Jesus, Father, so that we may not, have, not perish but have eternal life. So we thank you, Father, for who you are to us, and we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have been with us through everything. I pray, Father, that you will bring back to remembrance, Lord Jesus, what you've done, Father, for us, Lord, so that we can honor you this morning with a good and a cheerful tithe and offering, Lord Jesus. I pray a blessing over everyone in this church and those watching via live stream, that you will touch each and every one of us, Father. That you will lift us up, Father God, and that you will make a way where there seems to be none. Nothing is impossible with you, Father God. And we know, Lord Jesus, that if we honor you, Father God, with our whole entire heart, Lord Jesus, that you will make a way, Father. So I speak a blessing over the leadership of this church. I pray, Father God, that this church will flourish in the name of Jesus. This church will make it, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We bind the attack of the enemy against our church, against our leaders, against our members, Father God. And we say, Lord Jesus, make a way, Father, because you are the great I am. And so I know, Lord Jesus, that you are who you say you are. And so I speak a blessing over us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Exciting times at
that kids believe. This month, our theme is The Cross, Jesus is Alive. We at Kids Believe would love to start getting the parents involved with what our kids are doing. So we will now be sending out weekly newsletters, allowing you to participate in conversation with your kids, as well as knowing exactly what is happening in Kids Believe. We will also be starting off with registration for this year. For the next four weeks, parents, please take the time to do this accordingly. We will have grace these four weeks, but unfortunately, after that, kids will not be allowed into Kids Believe without a form. Thanking you in advance for your cooperation. Can't wait to see you. Gentlemen, mark your calendars because something amazing is on the horizon. Join us for the Legacy Men's Camp, a transformative experience happening from the 17th to the 18th of May at Achterberg Campsite. Let's go all in for a weekend of growth, brotherhood and empowerment. Gents, this is your call to action. Secure your place today. The cost for the camp is only 700 Rand per person and all you need is a 300 Rand deposit payable now and the balance only due by the end of April. We cannot wait to see you at the Legacy Men's Camp. Legacy, real men, real life, real God. Hey family, we wish you a blessed Easter. Together we remember and celebrate the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We invite you to our Resurrection Sunday service this Sunday the 31st of March at 9 a.m. This is the Resurrection Day and the message on Resurrection Day is that you have to expect God to give you the best in the midst of the worst. Let's all gather together as we lift up the greatest name of all, our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. We love you, but God loves you best. See you Sunday. Thank you for joining us today. You can connect with us on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. Good morning family. It's a higher place. Yeah. Thank you so much. This is such an important, important time in our Christian calendar. And we commemorate the day that Listen, the, the, the reason we get saved is based on this weekend, Passover weekend. What we say when we accept the Lord and Savior as our personal Savior is what happened on this Passover weekend. I believe in my heart, I confess with my mouth. That's the whole point of us entering into the kingdom of heaven. So this is probably, not probably, it is the most important time in, in our, on our Christian calendar, actually. And so it's so, so important that we Take it as serious as it actually is. So, let's just close our eyes and bring this morning before the throne room of grace. Father, thank you so much for your presence. Thank you for who you are. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're moving in this room. Father, different people walk through these doors this morning with different things happening in their personal lives. Different things going on at home, Father. Each face as it differs... So our circumstances and our situations differ. However, Father, you remain the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so, Father, just as you've come through for all the characters in the Bible, just as you've come through for everyone, Father, that we've seen you come through for even in our lifetime. So, Father, we hold our hope high that you will come through in our circumstance. You will come through in our situations and Lord, we will not forget to come back and give you the honor and give you the praise as we return with our testimony as to how you have showed up in the time when we've needed you. So we thank you for your presence. Holy Spirit, we thank you for everything that you've allowed us to do this morning to commemorate this beautiful day that Jesus died on the cross, the cross of Calvary for our sin. And so we thank you, Father. For your grace and your mercy, in Jesus' name.
and a faithful church. We say amen and amen. Please say hi to your neighbor while you make your way down to your seat. And then uh, you can grab your seat. So before I get into the sermon this morning, um, I want to ask, I want us to just acknowledge the father and the mother of this house, Dr. Carl and Pastor John. Can we put our hands together for them? Yeah, man. So they, they, they have gone on a little bit of a break um, for the, since yesterday. And so uh, we wish them well. And I know my father is sitting there in front of his phone now, busy watching this. Hi, Dad. And uh, I said to him, hey, now you leave me. You, you do the ordination last week. Is someone not here this week? No, man, don't leave me like that. Um, but thank you so much for trusting me with this, with this powerful day because it's a very important day. And Anka and I were talking this morning, and I said, actually, this is now the third Easter weekend that I'm preaching. Pastor Lester and I go back to back on Easter weekends. So it's not, it's not something new. So I definitely want to thank my, my mother and my father. I always say it's my, my real parents and my spiritual parents for this time. And then, family, thank you so much to every one of you who have taken time out. I want to ask real quick, is there, any, is there any family members visiting from out of Joburg? You came with your family and just decided to come to church this morning. Can you just wave your hands real quick? Let's put our hands together for, wow, thank you so much, sir. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for choosing this as your place of worship this morning. This morning, ladies and gentlemen, I want to speak on a topic called Get Covered. Everybody help me say Get Covered. And so this, this topic says Get Covered, but it also, the title says Get Covered, but it also has three subtitles that, that's actually how we're going to work our way through this message this morning. It's the Lamb, the Blood, and the Passover. Amen. Can we say the Lamb, the Blood, and the Passover? So... So yeah, so, so get covered. You know, we're living in a very, very difficult time in 2024. We're living in a season where if you stand for Jesus, you can get ridiculed, right? If you stand for what Christ stands for, it's becoming increasingly difficult. So if you um, display your faith and your belief system on your social media platforms, especially if you're going up against the mainstream media's narrative of how things should be, you will soon find yourself canceled or you will soon find yourself in some deep water or your post taken down, right? But now we find ourselves in a time where the devil tries to change everything from what it's supposed to mean to what he wants it to mean, right? And so everything that God has placed out to be true, he has now turned around and flipped it the opposite way and said that it's not true. I can remember just less than 10 years ago, if we had a conversation about what a man is and a woman is, everyone would have a, a resounding consensus as to, yes, we understand chromosomes, we understand this is a man, this is a woman. But ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, if you have that conversation today, you might find yourself canceled. Are you with me? So everything that God meant for good, the devil tries to turn around into evil. And we see this all throughout the, our history, right? We see it even with the time of Christmas. So, so we celebrate as children of God, uh, we celebrate Jesus' birthday in December, right? But we also know that, uh, that it, it has come, the history has historically been a pagan holiday. And we understand that and we know that. But the point of what we celebrate is not necessarily so much about the paganism. We just decided to take December and just celebrate the fact that it's Jesus' birthday, right? And so we celebrate the story of Mary and Joseph, and we celebrate the story of Jesus, and we just experience that. But how many of you know that the devil has taken that very thing, and now, now next thing you know, it's all about Christmas trees, it's all about mistletoe, it's all about Santa Claus, it's all about reindeer. Listen, we're celebrating things that we don't even have in South Africa. Look, we don't have the snow that they have in America. But because of mainstream media, and because of the devil pushing this thing in mainstream media, all of a sudden you start believing something that you don't even know what you believe anymore. Are you with me this morning? You start believing stuff. And the same thing happens for Passover weekend, right? Passover weekend, such an important time on the Christian calendar, but yet we find ourselves worried about Easter eggs, worried about rabbits and bunnies, worried about uh, uh, pickle fish, worried about hot cross buns. There's nothing wrong with these things, and I'm not really a pickle fish fan. I scratch off all the onions and eat the fish, but <laughs> because it's just not something I really enjoy. But even so, 
Let's be careful as children of God not to take something that was meant to be such an important part of our Christian walk and turn it into hot cross buns and pickle fish and Easter eggs and rabbits. So I felt in my spirit strongly this morning, the Holy Spirit prompting me to say, Xavier, what I want you to do this morning is to remind my children what this weekend is really about. Remind them really what's going on. That's why I'm saying get covered, the lamb, the blood, and the Passover. Don't let the devil bamboozle you. Don't let him make you believe that it's about everything else besides what it's supposed to be about. Because the devil has a smart way of tricking us into believing something completely different. Next thing you know, everyone's celebrating Easter. And you're turning around like, oh, even the Muslims are celebrating Easter. Do they also believe in the cross of Calvary and all this? Yeah, because it's easy for them. It's no longer about Jesus. And that's the aim of the devil. But this morning, what we're going to do is we're going to remember why we came here this morning. Why we take out an hour and a half or two hours on a Friday, after, a Friday morning to come and celebrate what Jesus did for us on the cross of Calvary. So this is a Bible-believing church. And you know that um, Doc always speaks. He has his PhD and he's got his degree and his master's and all those things in theology. Myself, he pushed me to get my degree in theology. And so every time we speak here, we, we try and teach the, uh, the congregation something that you can go home with and apply during the week. Hence why our slogan is what you hear on a Sunday, you can apply on a Monday. So I want to take you a little bit on a teaching lesson. I, can you come with me on this journey real quick? Let's go on this journey. So, Clayton, if you can put up the, the Old Testament and the New Testament and how I've split it on the screen, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to do something called shadow and type. Somebody help me say shadow and type. And so in theology, we call it shadow and type. What happens in the Old Testament, it finds its way to play itself out into the New Testament. What happens in the Old Testament, talk about the prophecy, right? And so we find churches that believe in all sorts of crazy things and people pushing, some people calling themselves men of God and they want people to call them papa and father and all sorts of crazy things, right? And they push things. I, I can see today in the spirit that you're wearing a red underpants and that, and that has nothing to do with the power of God. It has nothing to do with the presence of God. Right? They proffer lie. <laughs> Say things that's not true. Is God so deep? Listen, is God so deep that they got people working in the congregation to go home with you and to see where you love? And then they come and tell the pastor, this one loves here. They drive a car like that. And then you're sitting on a Sunday and you say, and they say to you, the brother sitting there with a white t shirt. You, you drive such and such a car. And now you're thinking, yo, God is speaking to me. Meantime, it was you being bamboozled. Right? They prophesy a lie. Other churches, they make it all about every Sunday must be a healing service. Every Sunday must be a you bring this. Those, those things has its place in, the, in, the, in, in the, the, the house of God, right? And it has its place in our Christian walk. But you can't be lopsided to where every Sunday it's one way. It needs to be, we need to understand the word of God. And this morning we're going to do a little bit of a history lesson here. And so the Old Testament, right? And so where the Passover, the first Passover starts in the book of Exodus, right? And so Exodus chapter 12, this is where the Passover starts. So Clayton, if you can drop it on the screen for me real quick. Exodus chapter 12. This is where the Passover starts, right? And so... On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, every firstborn of both people and animals. And I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign. Listen, the blood will be a sign for you on your houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will do what? I will pass over you. When I do what? When I see the blood. Remember, we're speaking about the lamb, the blood, and the Passover, right? So when I see the blood, I will pass over you, right? No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. So when he sees the blood, he passes over you. So everything that the devil meant for evil will not touch you. When Jesus sees the blood, right? 
And so we find ourselves in the Old Testament. And so when we speak about Abraham and Isaac, we know that Abraham then gets told that you must sacrifice your son. And as he comes up to the sacrifice, he didn't want to do it. He's been praying about his son for such a long time. He's been trusting God to come through with his son. And eventually he gets the son that he's been crying about and trusting God for in his ripe old age. And eventually when the son comes, God now says, now I want you to sacrifice your son. And so Abraham, with obedience, he takes his son and his son doesn't know where he says dad I see the fire I see the wood I see all the elements but where is the sacrifice and he says son we will trust God when we get there to supply the sacrifice and we know the story right before he's about to sacrifice his son we see what a ram stuck in the bush and that ram God then tells Abraham back off there's the sacrifice you're going to use this ram instead of sacrificing your son and so later on in the Old Testament, we understand that animals are used for blood sacrifice. Pastor Neil mentioned it earlier. We understand that that's what the thing is. And so now we fast forward to Exodus. Now we come to Moses. And so the Israelites find themselves caught up in Egypt in a land where they are slaves, in a land where it's much like how apartheid used to be in South Africa a couple of years ago, where you're not allowed to go there, where you're not allowed to touch this, you're not allowed to make this loan, you're not allowed to go there. And so they are depressed, they are suppressed, and they are falling, finding themselves under the rule of a man named Pharaoh. Are you with the story so far? And so Pharaoh is suppressing the Israelites. And so God then says, Moses, what I need you to do is, I need you to go get the people out of the hand of Pharaoh so they can experience what? Freedom. So they can experience breakthrough. So they can experience blessing. And so he then walks and then one day there's a bush that's on fire. And he says, take off your sandals. The feet you are standing is holy. The, the ground you're standing on is holy, holy ground. And he stands there and God then says, now what I want you to go do is go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. Moses then goes to Pharaoh. We know the story. Pharaoh is hard-headed. He doesn't want to let the people go. Eventually, God then tells Moses, now I'm going to bring plagues. And we get the plague about the frogs and the flies and the water turning into blood and a lot of sickness and disease and a hailstorm and all sorts of plagues hit, hit, hit Egypt, right? But yet what begins to happen is that Pharaoh still doesn't want to let the people go. Moses then for the last time goes to God and he says, okay, God, here's what we got to do. Pharaoh still doesn't want to let my people go. What do I do? God says, this is what you're going to do. Go to your people and tell them to get a lamb, right? That is a year old, only a year old. He gives them a very particular set of instructions. Get a lamb that is a year old. And when you have that lamb, you sacrifice that lamb. You take that blood and you take, a, a, it's like a little branch, right? It's called a hyssop. It's like a, tree, like a small little branch with, with little flowers on. And you dip that branch into the, into the blood of the lamb. And he tells him to do this. He says you must roast the lamb. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to propose to you that instead of eating pickled fish and, and hot cross buns, we're supposed to be brying lamb chops, right? Because he says you must roast the lamb on the... <laughs> on the he says roast it on hot coal. That's most now brying, isn't it? You thought we came up with brying. That's been brying since then. Roast the lamb on a hot coal and eat it with unleavened bread. So then they begin, and he says, Moses, go to your people, those who identify as my children. There's a lot of people in 2024 identifying as a lot of things, but I don't know about you. Me, I identify as a child of the loving God, right? I identify as a Christian in good times, in bad times, when it's difficult to be one or when it's unpopular to say you're saved. I still identify as a child of God. And he then says, those who identify as my children, go give them this instruction. He even goes further to say he doesn't even have to just be Israelites. All those who identify with me, give them this instruction. So then he says, okay, let's do this. Moses then goes, calls everyone, says, okay, guys, here's the plan. We're going to get, we, he calls all the elders of the house, the fathers of the house. Father, are you here? Do I have any fathers in the house? He calls all the fathers in the house. And he says, gentlemen, I need you. They come, they say, okay, gents, here's the plan. God instructs us. We're going to go get the lambs. And what we're going to do is we're going to slaughter this lamb. We're going to take the blood. But with this blood, what we're going to have to do with this blood, we're going to have to go outside our doorpost. And we're going to put one stroke on the one side of the door, a stroke on the other side of the door, and a stroke on the top of the door. They say, okay, Moses, we hear you. Is that the plan? He says, yes, that's the, that's the plan. He says, okay, so why? What is God saying? He explains to the guys, this is what God is saying. The only way Pharaoh is going to let us go is if he kills the first born son in every house of Egypt and every house of those who don't believe in him. They say, okay, shut, that's the plan. 
So the guys go in the house in the night. They slaughter. They do the whole thing that they're supposed to be doing. And then they take the blood. All the men, the fathers of the home, they go outside and they say one, two, and three. And now it's covered by the blood. You see, sometimes we just say, Father, cover me with the blood of, of the lamb. And sometimes we don't even know what we're saying and where it actually derives from, right? Sometimes we just speak things. And sometimes, you know, I was thinking while I was preparing this sermon, you know, sometimes we even pray like these Americans and we're saying, Father God, Father God. And like they sound like security God. And because he, God, 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 he's so... But sometimes we do things we don't understand. <laughs> we do things we don't understand why we're doing it, right? That's why I'm trying to explain to you the significance of today, this Friday that we're sitting here in church. It has so much power. And I'm explaining to you why we celebrate this day. So we don't just fight a God, fight a God. We know why we are fight a God. <laughs> when Doc says, when Doc says, um, we're going to go on the live. Fathers, take the oil and anoint your doorpost. This is where it comes from. We're not doing things sucking from our thumb. We don't know what we're doing. It comes from scripture, right? Remember, we're a Bible-believing church. We do things according to the word of God. So here's the thing. So now they, they put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. The angel of death passes. The next morning, the Bible says, that when they wake up, they hear a loud cry and toiling and moaning from all the Egyptians. Because they woke up and realized all their firstborn sons were dead, including Pharaoh. So Pharaoh then calls Moses says, okay, I've, I've had enough. I'm tired. You guys can go now. And so they go. And so if we can put the this, this split slide on real quick. And so what happens in Exodus chapter 12 verse 7 is that God instructs them to get a lamb. Everybody help me say a lamb. And then what happens in Exodus 12 13, he instructs them to put the blood. Everybody help me say blood. Then what happens in the Passover in Exodus, in Exodus chapter 13 again is the time now when the, when the angel of death passes and sees that, okay, here's the blood we pass. Now here's the interesting part. And you might say, okay, Zach, that's in the Old Testament. I hear you. I get you. What about now? Let me explain to you how we get to now. And you'll see I made the table in such a way that you can connect immediately what happens there to what happens there. And so there with the lamb, in the book of John 1 verse 29, this is what happens. John the Baptist is busy baptizing people. And as he's busy baptizing people, he says, I'm just doing this. I'm holding a place for someone that's to come. And they don't know who's coming because nobody knows what Jesus is about to do yet, right? And at the tender age of 30 years old, Jesus begins to come and and he realizes now that for 30 to 33, he needs to be baptized so that he can start calling the disciples. He needs to be anointed in a different way, baptized with water, so he can start calling the disciples so that they can start the work of God, what we now call the Great Commission, right? And so Jesus comes, and as he's walking, John the Baptist is busy teaching. He's busy baptizing people and teaching. And he says, there shall come a man whose sandals I am not even worthy to untie. Because they asked John the Baptist, are you the Messiah? Are you Elijah? Are you the next person we're supposed to be looking for? John says, no, 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 guys. There's somebody coming that's more powerful than me. If you guys think I'm good, there's a guy coming, man, he's going to blow your socks off. And they don't know who he's talking about. And the Bible says there in John 1, 29, while he's busy baptizing people, he looks up and all of a sudden there comes a man. Right, And this is the words of John the Baptist. He says, ladies and gentlemen, listen to what John says out, out here in the New Testament. The same thing that happened out here in the Old Testament. He says, behold what? The Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. So remember there, go and find a lamb and slaughter. Here he says, behold the Lamb of God. Can you see the shadow and the type? Can you see how it's connecting there to connecting there? Okay, so check here. What happens next, right? Clay, if you can drop that scripture there in John real quick on the, on the thing. So listen, check. John 19, 33. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did what? They did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear. It brought forth what? Sudden flow of what? Okay, so let's go to our split screen again, right? We're kind of teaching here a little bit, but we're enjoying, are you enjoying so far? Okay, so what we do now is we go then, he says, okay, 
Now we go to John 19, 33, which now says, okay, we got the Lamb. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the Son of the world. Here's Jesus, right? Then he says, okay, now when they pierce him in his side, so what the Roman soldiers had to do is, it was Passover, was Saturday, so it's tomorrow. That's why we celebrate the Friday, the Saturday, the Sunday, right? It's the, so the Thursday night is actually, we should have all been coming to church on Thursday night to do Holy Communion, Pastor Nilo, because that's when it happened. It happened the Thursday night, and then, then the whole fight broke out when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was saying, can this bitter cup pass me by, and all those elements happened there. And then the Friday morning, he gets taken to Pilate. That's what we try to show here on the, on the, the skit that we did this morning. He gets taken to Pilate and th- gets taken all over. He gets flogged. He gets beaten up. And then eventually, he gets, walks up a road called Via Della Rosa on a hill called uh, Golgotha. Uh, which we now know as Calvary. And so he hangs on that cross. And so what was supposed to happen is that this, they're supposed to celebrate the Passover on Saturday morning, right? It's supposed to be a feast. It's supposed to be a good time. It's supposed to be a nice time. And so they say, look, we can't still have dead bodies hanging on the cross for tomorrow. So what I want you guys to do is the instruction goes out to the Roman soldiers and says, go and make sure all the bodies, everyone's dead. Okay. And so they go, and as they come there, how many of you have seen Passion of the Christ? Anyone? So they go, and they say, okay, let's go make sure all the bodies are dead. And the way to do this, they had to hit them on the legs and break their bones. Okay? And so when they hit them on the legs to break their bones, that's the time now when they die. Because now they've been hanging already for a couple of hours. They get hit on the legs, they die. So they go to the thief on the left, and they go and they break his bones, and he dies. They go to the thief on the right, and they break his bones, and he dies. They come to Jesus in the center, and right before they're about to break his bones, again, an Old Testament prophecy gets fulfilled, where the perfect lamb with no blemish, no wrinkle, no broken bones, it again gets fulfilled in the New Testament, where now God again doesn't allow them to break the bones of Jesus. Because he needs those bones again. Because he's going to wake up on Sunday morning. So now he comes, right before they're about to hit his legs, the one soldier says, he's already dead. He says, no man, he's not already dead. He says, yes, he is. He's already dead. The other soldier says, okay, just to make sure he's already dead, he throws him the spear and he says, stab him in his side. These soldiers don't even know they're fulfilling scripture. They just there, busy killing and hitting and doing. They don't even realize that scripture is being fulfilled here. Throws him the spear, stabs him in his side, and what comes out? The blood of the perfect lamb. So now again, put the blood on your doorpost. Put the blood on your doorpost. So Zex, must we still go and slaughter lambs? No. Must we still take physical blood and put it on our doorpost? No. So what do we do now? We go this side now. We acknowledge that there was a Friday afternoon. We acknowledge that the perfect Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world has walked the face of this earth. We acknowledge that they hung him high and they stretched him wide. We acknowledge that he was stabbed in the side and blood and water flowed. But now there's a part, we dealt with the lamb, we dealt with the blood. There's this last part here, that's the Passover. So this is what happens. Satan seeks to take your soul. Anything that looks remotely like Jesus, he hates You and I, the Bible says, we were created in the express image and likeness of Jesus. So the devil is not your friend. He is not here to play games with you. He's not here to entertain your tricks and schemes. He's not here. When the devil wants you to fall, he'll come in subtly and he'll start destroying your family from the inside out. When he wants you to sell your soul, he'll give you a little bit of money. When he wants you to stop coming to church more often, you, you someone are working overtime. Now, you, your reasoning can be right. Your logic behind why you want to do certain things can be right. But be careful of the schemes of the enemy. 
He's out to get your soul. He's out to destroy your family. He's out to put your children on drugs. He's out to have you go, going round and round in circles. He's out to destroy you and everything you got and everything you love. That's what he's out here to do. The Bible says in the book of John, he says the thief comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He's not our friend. And so while we find ourselves on our way to hell, because every one of us in this room, we all have faults. We all have things that shortcomings. We all have flaws. We all have things that we do that we are not proud of. We all have things that if God has to look at us with that eye, we're going to make our way straight and promptly to hell. And Jesus knows this. He knows I shame my people are not going to make it if I don't step in. Everyone in this room, if you look upon a woman lustfully, you have already committed adultery in your heart. Just a brush is nice, adultery finish. Hell. To keep up the laws that Moses has put in place, we understand that it's almost near impossible. And Jesus understands this and he realizes, I'm going to have to step in and do something about this. He says, okay, in the Old Testament, I told them to take a lamb. In the Old Testament, I told them to put blood. In the Old Testament, I gave them these instructions. But now I can see for you, for me, for me, Xavier, for Anka, for Lee, for everyone in this room. You can call yourself by name. He was thinking about you on this Friday afternoon. How could he think about me so far ahead? Yes, he knows every hair on your head. He knew you before you were born. He knew your name while you were still in your mother's womb. Before your parents chose a name, he knew who you were going to be. He was thinking about you. And while we stand there, in our sin, in our ability to not even, we don't deserve what Jesus has done for us on this Friday morning. As we sit here, we, I don't deserve it. I'm not good enough. You don't deserve it. You're not good enough. There's nothing you can do. The Bible says all your good deeds are like filthy rags before him. There's nothing you can do that's going to impress Jesus. He knows it all. He walks on streets of gold. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. He can ascend into heaven. He can do whatever he wants to do. He's God all by himself. There's nothing you can do to impress him. The one thing you can do is called obedience. That's literally the only thing you can do that comes coupled with faith. It says nothing moves the heart of God except faith. He says, okay, so, okay, so I hear everything. I hear how dirty I am. I hear how I don't deserve it. So what does this mean for me now? This means you have to obey. You have to believe in this faith that Jesus died for you and that he rose again. So what begins to happen is that when we get closer here, to the Passover weekend, while the devil wants to throw you aside, there's two things that the blood does. Number one, the blood sets you apart. It sets you apart. Because remember what he told Moses to tell the people, when I come, I want to see who identifies with me. I want to see who's my child. I want to see that when I come and, and, and I return back from my throne room of grace in heaven and something happens that's called the rapture or before the rapture, you somehow die from whichever reason, a heart attack, a car accident, old age, whatever. At some point, you're going to be dead. In the next 80 years, probably no one will be in this room. That's here now. Your children will be already that age. And, but, but nobody in this room will be alive unless maybe the small Smallest child will be 85 or 90 or something, but the rest of us will all be dead and gone. And until that point, the question remains, how do I, how do I as God identify who my child is? And the answer is, the only way I can, be, I can be set apart is that if I cover myself with the blood. Amen? If I cover myself with the blood... That's the way when Jesus comes down to fetch his children, he'll know, my one, mine, 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 mine. All of these are mine. The second thing that the, that the blood does, ladies and gentlemen, it protects you. 
It covers you. So when we pray, Father, we pray for a hedge of protection around our home, like it is in the book of Job. When we say, Father, I ask you to cover me with the blood of Jesus, what's happening in the spiritual realm, there is literally blood of Jesus covering you in the spiritual realm. You might not be able to see it with your naked eyes, but any time the devil tries to hit you, any time he tries to throw you off, any time he tries to destroy your family, when you say, Father, I ask you to cover me with the blood of Jesus, there's this big red blanket that covers each and every one of us and when the devil tries to throw you off he says Ish, yeah, I can't when he tries to walk past your house he says Ish, we have to skip this one when he tries to come there by your house he says oh, you know, we have to skip this one when the demons come out to try and destroy you he walks he says hey, this one is covered Ish, this one is covered Ish, this one is covered how do I know this because in Job he says I'm seeking for the one I can devour he says have you tried my servant Job he says I can't because he's covered He's covered by your blood. There's nothing. He's untouchable. I don't know about you, but I want to be untouchable from the forces of evil. I want to be untouchable from Satan. I want him to look at me and he must get scared. I posted a picture on my, on my YouTube the other day, on my what is Instagram, and I said, this is that look that tells the devil, now you need to be worried. Because when I'm covered with the blood, the devil needs to start worrying. When you are covered with the blood, the devil needs to start shaking in his boots because guess what? You're going to turn your whole workplace upside down. Guess what? You're going to turn your whole college upside down. Guess what? You're going to turn your whole school upside down. Guess what? You're going to turn your whole business upside down. Everything you touch and do will be covered by the blood of the Lamb. And everything you do, you shall come out with a testimony. So when he tries to hit you and he sees red, he knows now nah, this one is covered by the blood of the Lamb. The perfect lamb who takes away the sin of the world is now Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. And he comes and he covers us with his blood. Get covered. The lamb, Jesus Christ. The blood, they stabbed him in his side. The blood and water flowed. You know what happened to that soldier? You can stop playing, I'm clo closing. What happened to that soldier? He's, the Bible says that when he stood there, and they stabbed him. The same soldiers that were hitting, that were flogging, that were doing all sorts. When he stood there and that blood and water fell onto him. The Bible says, and that day he knew that truly this is the son of God. Because he was covered by the blood of Jesus. With every eye closed and with every head bowed on this Friday afternoon. I want every person to examine your heart just for this next two minutes or so a minute or two just examine your heart and ask yourself am i truly covered and the only way ladies and gentlemen to get covered is to accept the lord jesus as your lord and personal savior to say i believe in my heart and i confess with my mouth that friday this friday that we're sitting here today it happened but even more so, Sunday that we're going to celebrate in the next two days, that also happened. But Jesus did it for my sin. He did it for my mess. He did it for my family. He did it for my children. And if you are in this room this morning and you want to accept the Lord Jesus as Lord and personal Savior, every eye is closed. The reason is because we don't want you to feel a little bit under pressure. We don't want you to feel embarrassed. And so that's why we ask everyone just not to to make you feel uncomfortable, but if, it, if you do want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ this morning, please can you just raise up your hand like this real quick. Just raise up your hand like this real quick. Come on, you can raise up your hand real quick. If your hand is up, please can you stand real quick. Don't, don't be shy, don't be worried. Just take your, 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 your Bible, if you have, if you're sitting alone, just take your bag with you. But just stand up real quick. What I'm going to ask you to do is just to real quick, if there's someone sitting next to you, if you're a little bit shy, just walk with you down to the aisle. Just come all the way down to the front here. The reason is, is because we have some people that's going to pray with you here, that's going to trust with you here, that's going to walk this journey with you. We're going to really encourage you on this journey. It's in the precious blood of God. Come on, let's put our hands together for everyone coming. 
Yes, this is beautiful. That's my portion. You can face me for everyone coming. Please face me. Wow, this is beautiful. Can we all please stand? Family, can we all please stand? We, we're closing the service. Can we all please stand? We're going to pray for. If you still want to come, you still have one more minute left. Just come through real quick. Don't be shy. Don't be scared. Just come through real quick. We're going to pray together. So what happens is this Friday, since last night, which was now Thursday night, last night was last supper. Last night, early, uh, early morning hours this morning was when Judas betrayed him with a kiss. Already now this time, half past ten, he's already now being taken from pillar to post. He's already now been taken from there to there to there, all over the place. Around 3 o'clock in the afternoon is when he's finally hanging on, on, on the cross, the Bible teaches, right? So right now from this morning, all the way to 3 o'clock this afternoon, my Savior and your Savior was taken for granted. His beard was pulled out. There was a crown of thorns put in his, on his head. He was spat in his face. And the reason he endured the cross, the Bible says, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross and he did it for you and for me. Listen, I want you to understand, this is God all by himself. He even says, I can call 10,000 angels. I can stop this whole thing right in its tracks if I want to right now. While they're mocking him, are you really the king of the Jews? Bah! You said you can break the temple and rebuild it in three days? Bah! He's sitting there and he's quiet. The Bible says, like a lamb led to the slaughter, he was silent. And the reason he did that is for everyone standing in the front chair, for everyone in this room. He kept quiet because he knew, if I say something, I'm going to jeopardize this thing. Let me just be quiet and do what I'm, let me just do what I came here to do. Because that was the whole point. So he gets taken up that hill. He gets beaten. And the day when he says, about after three when he says into your hands I commit my spirit he breathes his last breath and the temple gets torn into two then only people realize yo this is really God he is who he says he is ladies and gentlemen I want to urge you tonight this afternoon or this morning don't wait until you see the clouds open and you hear the trumpet sound then you want to scrub yo I should have got saved long time Yo, why did I entertain the things of the world when Jesus died for me? So while Jay is going to come up and do the, the prayer, we're going to sing just like one more round to give. Because I can still feel in my heart, there's someone, you know what happens? You feel uncomfortable in your heart. It feels like, ish, 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 ish. When you feel that, ish, 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 that's the time you must just say, right, let me just go, man. let me just go and do this thing and go and accept Jesus. We're going to sing it one time. It's going to give you a, a, an opportunity to really quick come. For those of us in the, order, in the auditorium, let's just pray for everyone that's come out this morning. And there's a lot of young people. Your life will be covered for the rest of your future. You'll be covered with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's just pray for everyone. If you're in the front, just pray in your heart. We're going to pray together.
What a significant moment. I think this decision you'll never forget because it's on this beautiful Good Friday when Jesus died on that cross for our sins. So congregation, as a sign of encouragement, won't we please all join in on this prayer? Please do repeat this after me for those standing in front. Say, Jesus, thank you so much for your love. Your grace, for your grace, your mercy, for your mercy that, endures that endures forever. God, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. And I believe that with my faults and my wrongdoings, your blood washes whiter than snow. Lord, your word declares in Romans chapter 10 verse 9 that if I believe in my heart, that you died for me and that you rose again I will be saved so right now as a declaration of faith I believe that I am saved born again washed by the blood of the Lamb come on church let us put our hands together for this significant moment we worship you Jesus we worship you, Lord. I wish you could see the serious, the seriousness of even the, the young, the young people. Yo, they, I think they understand what they say. They really mean what they say. So family, just for, just for like five minutes after the service real quick, please can you just follow Pastor Neil over there and Brother Sean. We just want to get quickly your phone number so we can just get you plugged into the equipping classes, get you plugged into Project 13. So please just, just go there quickly. Let's put our hands together for everyone. Thank you so much. So, wow, did you enjoy crucifixion Friday this morning? We get you out like early now. You can go eat my other pickle fish and hot cross buns. Family, pickle fish, hot cross buns, Easter eggs, it's all nice. We also have it at our house. But let's not forget the real reason why, why we celebrate today. It's nice and it's lekker and all that. And it's part of our culture, as, especially as brown people. We like the pickle fish and hot cross bun story. And it's, part, it's become part of our culture. But let's not forget what Jesus did for us on this day. Amen. Father, thank you so much for your, for your love and your grace this morning. Thank you, Father, for your presence in this room. Father, I want to thank you for everyone that got saved this morning. Thank you, Father, that so many people decided to take this day seriously. Father, it shows us once again that what you did on this day isn't was, will not be taken for granted. It won't be just that you died for no reason. No, Father, this morning you saw and you brought to repentance so many new people into your kingdom. We pray, Lord, for every person that God saved this morning. Can you, can you help them to grow as we as a church help them to grow? That they will grow up and be pillars of faith in the house of God. Pillars of faith in their communities and in their families. Pillars of faith in their workplaces, wherever they go during the week at school. That, Father, they will show the love of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, for who you are. Father, this, this morning we ask you for safe traveling mercy as we make our way home. We ask you, Father, for your spirit to be in our homes. The peace that surpasses all understanding to guard us and to be with us in our homes. As we gather around the lunch table and enjoy one another's company as friends and family. We thank you, Father, that we even have a table and a house to gather in. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Now may the peace of the Lord God abide with you now until we meet on Sunday. In the mighty name of Jesus and a faithful church, we say amen and amen. Enjoy your, your afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good day.